Hello everyone and welcome to Daily Problems Practice, an initiative of Rouse IS where we take up important questions, MCQs, from the topics and articles published in the Hindu newspaper and the Indian Express. Articles and topics that are put up for today's discussion are listed on your screen and the detailed description along with the answers are given in the PDF and Word format mentioned in the description box. So let us begin with the first question for the day. So first we are going to start from the Hindu newspaper and articles and question associated with this newspaper. The first article for today is from the editorial page and here an article was published with respect to the MG Narega scheme and its basic analysis. Now government scheme and their evaluation is extremely important along with the basic provisions. MG Narega is one of the most flagship program of government of India and it provides right to employment to the rural population in India. Now in 2020, a scheme related question was asked and the scheme was member of parliament local area development scheme or MP lets. Based on the same we have created a question for today from the MG Narega scheme. The question says with reference to MG Narega, consider the following statement. The first statement is it provides constitutional right to employment to eligible person in rural areas. Now there are three pointers, constitutional right, employment and eligible person in the rural India. The second and the third pointers are correct. However, it is not a constitutional right. It is a legal right. There is no right to employment under the constitution of India. The second statement says that this scheme is core of the core schemes of union government. This statement is correct. Now please understand that there are six core of the core scheme. These are extremely important and top of the level schemes of the union government. The first is NSEP, the second is MG Narega. The other fours are related to different communities, scheduled castes, scheduled tribes, minorities and the backward classes along with the vulnerable groups. These are core of the core schemes as suggested by union government. So the second statement would be correct. The third statement says that it provides for unskilled voluntary work opportunities. Now please understand this. This statement is correct. First of all, it provides for unskilled labor. So a person should not be skilled. It is voluntarily in nature. It is not forced upon. It is not mandatory. And third, it is an opportunity. Government is not going to be there for door to door survey to ask people to come. It is an opportunity thrown to the eligible candidates in the rural India. So based on this discussion, the answer to this question would be option B. The answer to the UPSC's previous year question would be option D that is 1, 2 and 4 are correct. This is not on the yearly basis. This article of the Hindu newspaper appeared on page 10 and talks about an important legislation with respect to the manual scavenging. This law is known as Prohibition of Employment as Manual Scavenger and their Rehabilitation Act 2013. Now legal or statutory related questions is very very prominent and very repetitive in the UPSC's prelim examination. For instance in 2017 they have asked a question with respect to the Benami Property Transaction Act 1988. So based on the same statutory provision we have asked a question related to an act. The question asks for the following statement with respect to this manual scavenging act. The first statement is the implementation of the act is monitored by National Commission for Safai Karamchari. This statement is absolutely correct because this institution looks into that how many people are actually involved in manual scavenging, what is the current progress of eliminating the insanitary toilets, what is the progress of their rehabilitation. The second statement said that it provides for vigilance monitoring committee limited to sub district or subdivision and the district level. This statement is partially true because it is not limited to the sub district or district level. It is actually up to the state and the union level. So from that regard, this statement would be incorrect. The third statement is the act calls for survey of manual scavenger and their rehabilitation. This is correct. This act actually makes it mandatory to conduct a survey to calculate how many people are actually involved in manual scavenger. So based on this statement, the answer to this question would be option 1 and 3 that is C only. The answer to the UPSC's question would be option B that is 1 and 3 are incorrect. This article of the Hindu newspaper appeared on page 10 and talks about an important legislation with respect to domestic violences in India. Now domestic violence is something that occurs within the boundary or within a household. It may be practiced by any person irrespective of gender. So. As you can see in 2019, legislation related question was asked on Maternity Benefit Act 2017. 
based on the same we have created a question on the domestic violence act the question says with reference to the protection of women from domestic violence act 2005 consider the following statement the first is the act protects the right of women guaranteed under the constitution of india who are victims of violence of any kind occurring within a family so now this is a household related concept hence this statement is absolutely correct it is within the fam family it protects the right of a woman who are victim to violence so this statement is correct the second statement says the act has provided for appointment of protection officer by the central government to report the instances of domestic violence to the magistrate this statement is partially correct however the incorrect part is central government it is the state government and not the central government so state government is going to appoint such protection officer hence the statement is incorrect third is domestic violence under the act includes physical sexual verbal and emotional along with the economic abuse all these are part of the act hence the statement is correct so the answer to this question would be option b an answer to the question of upsc would be option c that is only 3 is correct now we come to the last question from the hindu newspaper which was published on page 8 and calls for an important geographical and geophysical concept of heat waves on the basis of the geological or geophysical concept in 2015 a question was asked by the upsc based on the same we have created a question for today question says consider the following statement first statement is according to imd which is indian meteorological department a region has a heat wave if its ambient temperature please understand this is ambient temperature not the temperature of soil or only air the ambient temperature deviates by at least 2.5 to 3.5 degrees from a long term average this statement would be incorrect because 2.5 is a small number the correct statement would be that it deviates at least 4.5 to 6.4 degrees celsius that is twice of what is given in the question the second statement is that imd declare heat wave if maximum temperature of a station reaches at least 45 degrees or more for plains or 40 or more degree celsius for the hilly region this statement would also be incorrect because it is 40 for the plains and 30 for the hilly areas so based on the discussion the answer to this question would be option d that is neither of the two statement given above are correct the answer to the upsc's question would be option b that is intertropical convergence zone seldom occurs now one thing is important over here is that you should know what is heat wave heat wave is defined based on the temperature threshold over a particular region in terms of actual temperature or its departure from the normal now normal here means the long term temperature not a temperature which changes every month now we'll start from the question from indian express the first question that we are going to take is from the article published on page 5 with respect to an important application known by the term e sanjeevani now based on the government schemes for example is 2016 other related question is asked which is a government scheme we have framed a question for today with reference to e sanjeevani which of the following statement is incorrect so you have to identify incorrect so there are three correct and one incorrect which you have to identify the first is it is a telemedicine service providing range of medical consultation through internet this is correct the moment we see e attached to a particular word it means it is related to internet so it is sanjeevani sanjeevani is derived from a sanjeevani that is an important ayurvedic medicine so it is a telemedicine service so this statement would be correct the second is it is launched under the ministry of health and family welfare which is an obvious choice because it is a matter of public health so this statement is also correct ayushman bharat program act as hub and spoke model for the working of e sanjeevani this statement is also correct hence the answer should be d d is your incorrect option that is location of patient should be within 10 km radius of the hospital or doctor this is incorrect there is no boundary associated with the location of a hospital or doctor a person sitting anywhere in india can use this application to get the e consultation now what is hub and spoke with respect to c let's say there's a particular hospital or a district hospital where there are 100 doctors who are associated now these 100 doctors will be providing the e sanjeevani services to all the regional or the sub centers or the doctors and the patients associated with that 
For example, there are nurses and paramedics who are in the sub-district hospitals or small dispensaries. So they can consult the doctors of the district hospital and this is how the hub and spoke model is going to function under e samjivni utilizing the schemes of Ayushman Bharat program. The answer to the question of UPSC would be option D that is the scheme of Uday is for providing financial turnaround and revival of power distribution companies or discoms. This article of the Indian Express was published on page 14 that is text and context and talks about an important telescope with the name ALMA. Now UPSC has already asked question related from astronomy. For example, in 2016, they have asked a question on AstroSat, which is an astronomical observatory satellite from India. So based on the same, we have created a question on astronomy today. With reference to ALMA radio telescope, which was in news recently, consider the following statements. This telescope is located in Ladakh region of India. This telescope is not located in India. This statement is incorrect. The A in ALMA stands for Atakama, which is a large millimeter array. So ALMA stands for Atakama large millimeter array. Atakama is a desert in northern Chile, which is in South America. The second statement says that it can capture universal images. Universal here means the image of universe across clouds. This is correct because it can penetrate through the dust clouds and help the astronomers examine dim and even the distant galaxies and stars out there. The third statement says that US, Canada, Japan are other partner nation in this project. This statement is correct. But India is not part of this project. So based on the discussion, the answer to this question would be option C and the answer to the question of UPSC would be option D that is neither of the above statement are correct. This article of the Indian Express was published on page 5 and talks about an important community in the state of Karnataka that is Banjara. Now centre government has decided to honour the community leader of Banjara and his name is Sant Sevalal Maharaj. Now this topic is actually associated with the Bhakti and the Sufi movement of medieval India. In 2014, a question from Bhakti movement calling for Sant Dadu Dayal as well as Madhavachare was asked. Based on the same, we have created a question for today. The question is with reference to cultural history of India, consider the following statements. The first is, Sant Sevalal was the social reformer of Banjara community. This statement is correct as we have gone through the article. This is where his name was mentioned and he is considered to be a leader from the Banjara community. The second statement is Pohra Devi Karnataka, also known as Banjara Kashi. Kashi is like a pilgrimage, is an important pilgrimage center for Banjara tribe. This statement is incorrect because Pohra Devi is not in Karnataka, it is in Maharashtra. Sant Sevalal is considered to be a social reformer and a spiritual leader among the Banjara community. He belongs to the early part of the 18th century and he was born in Shiva Moga district of Karnataka. Pohra Devi is located in Maharashtra where his Samadhi Stal is actually located. So based on the discussion, the answer to this question would be option A. The answer to the question of UPSC would be option D that is neither of the two are correct. That's all for today's daily prelims practice. For more such updates, stay tuned to our channel. Thank you.